You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner. Great to have former Sullivan Dove Hike in America against anti Semitism. He was on a lot lately about being arrested at Amnesty International. And of course, we looked at the Israel real estate show that was canceled in Flatbush. We'll talk about that tonight. And of course, Senator Schumer's remarks regarding Israel, particularly Bibi Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel. Good luck, Dove. Good to have you back again. Good to be with you and Shavua Tov to everybody. It should be a good week with good news. It's Purim, so it has to be, right? It's, uh, we can use some miracles. Yes, we're waiting. Absolutely. Well, I always like saying so many Hummans and only one Purim. <laughs> right. <laughs> well said. We need more Purims. Uh, so but I want to first begin with just with Amnesty International. You protest the fact they don't mention October 7th. They're supposedly against oppression and people being a hurt and oppressed in various countries, not a mention by Amnesty International. Since you were arrested about a week or so ago, any more information? Have you heard anything from them? No, we haven't heard anything from them, and I don't think I expected to hear anything from them. But I think it's important to highlight the hypocrisy of so many of these organizations that speak in such lofty terms. They care about humanity. They care about men, women, and children. Uh, when we had the event at Amnesty International, it was the day before uh, International Women's Day. And Amnesty International, they're in the forefront. They care about women everywhere in the world, except for Jewish women. And uh, the horrors that were committed against Jewish women on October 7th, uh, uh, that are beyond description, beyond belief, uh, uh, barbarism, uh, uh, really just... Uh, sick, sick behavior. It's, it, it, you know, it's almost impossible to believe that a human being could be involved in such horrible acts against innocent people and, and women in particular. And, and Amnesty International has just been silent. And, you know, this is a major international organization, uh, 20 million members, uh, you know, and they are just silent and they're hypocrites. And, uh, you know, and, you know, we were there, you know, 40 women to speak out, to stand up and, uh, uh, you know, and I was arrested, uh, which, you know, uh, as part of a civil disobedience act myself and another w woman. And I can tell you that in the future, we will be doing many more things with many, many more people prepared to be arrested if necessary, civil disobedience is a beautiful thing. It's something uh, that we in America admire, uh, going back to the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King, etc. So we as Jews who care deeply about our people, we need to do more than we are doing. Uh, we're not doing enough by any means, that's for sure. Yeah, listen, there's a lot that we have to be done, but I've gotten some interesting reaction. Now, we had Dove on a couple of nights ago because it was in the Israel real estate show that was supposed to take place in Flatbush, Brooklyn. It took place in Toronto and Montreal, Teaneck, New Jersey, five towns. And then there was a threat um, where the police told some of the leadership in the community that there could be as many as 800, 900 of these Hamas loving demonstrators coming to Brooklyn. So in the consultation where by David Cohn, respected post sec, they decided because of Pikuach Nefesh, of saving lives, that they were going to cancel the event. I know you were upset about it, but I spoke to quite a few people who were worried about the children because this was a residential area. And while it may send the wrong message and Hamas can claim victory, but on the other hand, they have an obligation to protect the children in the neighborhood. First of all, let me make it very, very clear. We all care about protecting our communities. And what was done in Flatbush jeopardizes all Jewish communities. Number one. Uh, by the way, I just want to point out, we in uh, the five towns, uh, we have two more events coming up for uh, the real estate, uh, uh, these real estate events, uh, one on March 28th and the other one on April 3rd, two major events in this community. Uh, we care about our children here as well, and about our women, and about our elderly, and about all Jews, every single Jew. Uh, I can only say this to you, and, and again, it's past. It happened. It was a horrible, horrible thing, and 
undermine our Jewish community. But the rabbis were lied to. They were lied to. Can I just be very clear about that? Okay. Rabbi Cohn was told, and I'm not going to go into, I, this is firsthand source. He was told, not by the police, by someone else, that the police said they could not protect the community. Rabbi David Cohn, who is an amazing person, 91 years old, he should be well and healthy. When he, when someone comes to him and says the police said they cannot protect the community, that was an absolute lie. The police made it very clear to anyone who would ask them that they would do their, their job to protect the community. So the, he was lied to. Of course, if you come to a Rabbi Cohen and you tell him something like this, the police said they cannot protect the community. What do you expect Rabbi Cohen to say? If, you, if the police cannot protect the community, for God's sake, okay, you can't do it. It's going to be dangerous. You know, attacks are happening all the time. People are being attacked in Flatbush and other communities on a regular basis. Anti-Semitism, the numbers are, are they, they've exploded. So what happened in Flatbush is a tragedy. It affects all communities, not just about Flatbush. But I'm saying to you, and I don't want to belabor this and... You know, uh, I, there's a lot to talk about, but what, what are we going to accomplish? Create more sinna, more hate, more Lashon Hara? The bottom line is this event happened. Everyone knew about it. Our enemy celebrated and sent a message to them. Those Jews are weaklings. We can beat them. That's exactly what their message was. You saw the posters they put out. This was a victory for the martyrs. That's what they said, the, for the Hamas martyrs. Wait, but here's, but here's the, the, Jew, the Jews of Flatbush gave them a victory? Really? When it was all lies? The police would have protected the community in every single way. Not to belabor the point of what I was told, this shul is in a very residential area. There's not commercial strips, unlike maybe in the five towns or elsewhere where it's more of a commercial type area. No, that's not that, true. Wait, 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 wait. The event that I went to. The yeah. shul is not in a commercial area. The events that are coming up are not in commercial areas. L Zev, you don't want me to go through the list of lies that were told to the rabbis. There are so many, and they're so freaking pathetic. Lie after lie after lie. Oh, well, you want to hear one of them? I mean, you know, I was told this directly, that the police know there's a real serious bomb threat a real serious well if it's so serious you think the police would go and get the guy with the bomb i mean so many things were spread to scare the rabbis it was really very very again i there's so much more zev yeah i'm not gonna buy, I'm gonna nothing will be accomplished I hope that never happens. And, and you know, I actually hope that someone else plans something in Flatbush because a lot of people were going to this event. I spoke to people, so many people who said, my family, we were going, we're interested in looking, we're interested in finding out. I attended the event in Cedarhurst. It was wonderful. It was very, for anyone interested in buying in Israel, and let me tell you, a lot of Jews are very concerned about the future. Right, especially here. And I might add, don't be so sure. I might add, by the way, though, that the offices of the Jewish press, which are located in Flatbush, not too far from where the rally, where the Israel real estate show was to take place, was vandalized. I believe Friday morning, I got some pictures of the vandals. So I can understand concern that children walking around. I'm just telling you one other point, then we'll move on. Zev, to Zev, Zev, I'm yeah. concerned too. But you cannot, this was to me, I'm going to say clearly, a chilil Hashem, a desecration of Hashem's name. That's what this was. I'm saying it. It was a chilil Hashem. Oh, the children, of course we care about the children. We have a police department. And they would have been there with the showroom, with everyone. Everything would have been fine, absolutely fine. As you're telling the story, there was the, the Jewish press offices. and. Other things happen all the time. You know that. So what are we going to do? By the way, every time there's an event now, 
I pointed this out on one of your shows. What about other events coming up? What about a Hasidic Rebbe from, from Israel, the occupied territory of Israel? Because to them, it's all occupied. What about when the when the vision of the Rebbe comes to Flatbush and there's going to be ads and in the newspapers, the great rabbi from Israel coming come, and they decide to demonstrate? Are we going to call that off? Are we going to call off every single event in Flatbush when our enemies threaten? Because now they know they can do that and get away with it? No, I, listen, there are two sides of this equation, and I agree with you. There's a victory for Hamas because they can say <clears throat> they canceled a pro-Israel event. They canceled Matas Yo concert in Boston, right? So they're, they have a track record of canceling events that the Jewish community has, and it's not always necessarily related to Israel. Like you pointed, it could be a Rebbe, it could be a Tehillim rally, it could be whatever it might be. So that's Yes, they the know, they know, they know. We cannot they can like, accomplish, you know, and they can accomplish scaring the Jewish community, not not having events in our community. What what about when one of the schools uh, has someone from Israel to, to come and speak, to do a Dvar Torah, to, to you know whatever the event is, and and in some way it's publicized, and our enemies make a point of saying we're going to demonstrate, we're coming out there. I'm, I'm just asking the question: What are we going to do then? It's it's a it's a good question, and I think we have to ha listen. All the other places that had the events. There were some incidents in Teaneck, and we as a Jewish community have to provide protection for our institutions because we cannot do any victory. At the same time, what I heard from some of the people is that they're afraid that blocks away you can have the after the event some of these Palestinian Hamas supporters walking around and starting up. So I understand the concern. They do that. They, they, they do that anyway. They do that anyway. Look, we have schools in Brooklyn, uh, public schools. As you know, I'm involved. There's another major story in the New York Post uh, Sunday, major, maybe even page one. Uh, teachers being harassed by these Hamas people. I mean, it's going on all over the place, on trains, in the streets, things being said, and so on. So what do we do? You know what? Leave. Leave. You're you're making the Get case. The you're, you're making the case for Aliyah, for Aliyah. Well, you know, whatever. I I look, look, Midwood Flatbush. It's a beautiful community. Beautiful community. I represented that area for thirty six years, and let me tell you something. This is not the way to be. But the bottom line is, I just want to say, the rabbis were lied to. This was all a das Torah, das Torah, das Torah. They lied to the rabbis, for God's sake. What else do I need to say? Check it out. Find out what the rabbis were told and who told them and where did it come from? The bottom line is the police could not protect the community. Big Mayor Adams, have Mayor Adams on your show. Ask Mayor Adams if that's true. Listen, the police are here to, the, to make sure that nothing happens at these rallies, but... Um, from what I was told, and then we're going to move on to Schumer, is that the rabbi of the shul was in touch directly uh, with the, the with the police department, and the went to Cohen, and it was a hard decision to make. But at the end of the day, because they felt the pikuach nefesh saving lives. No, the rabbis were lied to. I'm saying it again. Okay, I don't I'm saying it again. Who, who, who I, lied? I, Look, I, don't say who who lied. The leaders, community leaders. Who are these people? They lied. Yes, individuals lied to Rabbi Cohn in particular. Okay, I know this directly, exactly what he was told, and it was not true. I don't blame Rabbi Cohn for a second, but some of these individuals lied to him, spoke on behalf of the police, saying the police could not protect the community. Zev. With former so son. what do you do? It's it's listen. It's we By live. By the way, where where yeah. are the elected the elected officials from the neighborhood? I don't want to start mentioning names. Like anybody hear from them? Like do they have anything to say on this? I haven't heard anything. I, I did hear from Ina Vernikov though. Yeah. Well, she's sure. she's she's one of those courageous people. We hardly have any. 
We have no leadership. That's a joke. Yeah, we have people with titles. We have brilliant Rabbanim, of course, absolutely. Leaders? Where? Tell me where. Point point to one, please tell me. Zev, who? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about one of the leaders of the Jewish people, Senator Chuck Schumer, when we come back as well. Our guest, former Sullivan Dove Heiken, head of Americans for Against Anti-Semitism. And we're going to continue our conversation right after these messages. And we'll take some phone calls as well. And we'll talk about Chuck Schumer. 212-769-1925. 212-769-1925. Email Zev at talklinenetwork.com. Zev at talklinenetwork.com. Coming up a little later on this morning, we'll speak to Rabbi Abraham Cooper of the Wiesenthal Center, who wasn't allowed to wear a yarmulke in Saudi Arabia. What's that all about? Well, we'll cover that in this broadcast as well. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Talkline Network. Hi, this is Zev Brenner. You're listening to TalkLineNetwork.com over WNEWFM HD3 New York. Thanks for listening. Our real estate fear is on this for him. Support Israel, the taste of the Holy Land. Men and women just love Evan Zahab's super smooth and soft Israeli rock. The Evan Zahav Brandy VSOP and special box and the premium Evan Zahav Goldstone Grand Reserve Brandy represents superb Israeli distilling traditions and the finest natural spirits and oak barrels ever made and makes for a great Shalach Manas gift. Jewish women work exceptionally hard this time of year and are the anchor of the home. What better way to show appreciation than with these exceptional drinks from Israel? If you're looking for other great choices for Purim, Consider Etienne Francais VSOP Armagnac with subtle hints of spices. Etienne Francais VSOP Cognac aged for a minimum of four years in oak casks. Or Etienne Francais XO Cognac aged for a minimum of 10 years in oak casks. The Kumba Chiliana collections are the best kosher mevushal wines from Chile. It's a big hit and has become a favorite wine for special occasions. Its taste is full and steady with notes of blueberry, blackberry, and red currant. You'll also love the wild goat mevushal wines from Argentina all kosher for Pesach and year-round. A happy Purim from Doina Limited, importer of the finest kosher wines, cognacs, and brandy. Hi, everybody. I'm Dov Sheeran, and I have the song going, Zachreini, now my hit song, which means remember me, and how can you ever forget quality? They're at a new location now with a state-of-the-art showroom at 1416 38th Street in Brooklyn between... 14th and 15th Avenue. They're serving the tri-state for over 50 years with the best in carpeting and flooring. Take down their number, 718-941-4200. Quality! In a place where tradition meets luxury. The Sleepy Hollow Hotel in Terrytown, newly renovated, featuring a stunning exterior, beautiful rooms, and an inviting lobby, a stunning pool, and a spa, plus a shul and a mikveh right outside. And an executive host is Menachem Weinstock. <laughs> Savor the flavors of Pesach with Chef Shimmy. Fresh food that will delight your senses. Things <laughs> rides, garage arts, concerts, yomtuk show, carnival games, design of home play. 201 the That's preceding the program is a pan for The I'm opinions and views expressed therein do not this necessarily Tuesday, reflect those 19th, of AM620 WSNR or management. This is AM620 WSNR. Just a little bit more information on this topic. Jersey City. Zab Shavua Tov. My name is Dan Plout. I am a trustee of the village of Cedarhurst. This Tuesday, March 19th, we're going to be having elections for trustee of the village. And Myrna Zisman, my fellow trustee, and I are running for re-election to represent our beloved village for another four years. Some of the things that make our village unique and things that we have passion to help our residents, first and foremost, safety and security. We have, Myrna and I, a very deep relationship and collaboration with NCPD, Nassau County Police Department. And this was illustrated and a couple of recent thoughts. One, we put together with our mayor, Mayor Weinstock, Deputy Mayor, New York State Assemblyman Ari Brown, as well as Trustee Izzy Wasser, we put together a pro-Israel rally one week after the massacre on October the 7th in our village. We had 5,000 people there, including many dignitaries, and NCPD had tremendous security there, as they always do, and as they did this past Tuesday, at the real estate event in the Young Israel Lawrence Cedarhurst. 
So that's that's one thing that we take tremendous pride on. In addition, we have the nope. lowest taxes of any village on the south shore of Nassau County. And this is through collaboration with our own DPW, which basically does road road repair as well as lighting for the village. I ask everybody, please come out, vote March 19th in Cedarhurst Village Hall for Myrna Zisman and Dan Cloud. Zeb, thank you so much. Hi, this is Jakob Searle from the Queen's Jewish Link and Bukharian Jewish Link. I just want to thank all 350 people and our sponsors who participated in the networking event. Our newspaper is distributed all over Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, Long Island, and you can get a copy. And you're welcome to advertise with us to the vast audience that we have. And just call 917-549-6145, 917-549-6145 for any information concerning the newspaper or advertising. Thank you so much. Yaakov Searle. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. And we're back. Former Assemblyman Dove Hyken is our guest, head of Americans Against Anti-Semitism. Let's go to Motion, the Upper West Side of Manhattan. You have a question or a comment for Dove. Go ahead. Moshe, are you there? Moshe, are you there? Okay. If not, we'll get to you a little later on. Okay. Uh, well, let's hear from Senator Chuck Schumer. We cannot let anger or trauma determine our actions or cloud our judgment. This two-state solution may feel daunting, especially now, but I believe it is the only realistic and sustainable solution on the basis of security, on the basis of prosperity, on the basis of fundamental human rights and dignity. But in order to achieve a two-state solution, the reality is that things must change. Right now, there are four, four major obstacles standing in the way of two states. And until they are removed from the equation, there will never be peace in Israel and Gaza and the West Bank. The four major obstacles are Hamas and the Palestinians who support and tolerate their evil ways, radical right-wing Israelis in government and society, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. You heard of Senator Chuck Schumer. Your reaction, though, I'm getting a lot of people upset, so upset about it, and um, want to get your thoughts. Well, I, <laughs> he stabbed Israel in the back, plain and simple. It was horrible. Uh, I listened to the entire 50-minute uh, speech on the uh, floor of the Senate. If you notice, by the way, if you watch it, uh, there's nobody there. <laughs> you know he's he's standing there, and and part of his speech, by the way, as you know, Zev, he talks about the thing that he has been saying for thirty years. You would think he would change that already. When he talks about, uh, do you know my name? Schumer. I'm Schumer. Means, right? you know what Schumer means I mean Schumer. I yeah, I am the protector of the Jewish people. Like really, uh, he thirty years of repeating the same crap. The same nonsense. That's what he's been doing. Every shul that he goes to, every Jewish event he goes to, he is the protector of the Jewish people. He's there fighting anti-Semitism. Did anybody notice that? But this speech was really the as low as it gets with people like Schumer who needs enemies. He undermined. I mean, when you have, uh, uh, you know, in Israel, everyone, it doesn't matter, you know, politically what your affiliation is. Uh, what what Schumer did, undermining Israel's democracy, saying that uh, the prime minister of Israel, he literally said he was an evil guy. He was a terrible guy. Two, two, two state solution. Every poll in Israel shows that 85% of the people are against two states, period. And now... What is, what is this, a reward for Hamas for what they did on October 7th? This is what Schumer's, by the way, what Schumer was really doing, let's let's be clear about it. He should have said that the president of the United States, Biden, 
asked me to make this speech. It came out into this way. They did discuss it in advance. It was okay? coordinated. It was coordinated in advance, not just yeah. discussed. Yeah. Okay. By the way, by the way, we shouldn't really be upset uh, about the speech because Biden says it was a good speech. Biden said, "Yeah, it was a good speech. Yeah, it was great. It was great." I just want to say something to everybody out there. Schumer is going to come to your synagogue. He's going to come to your events. Like Tojo with Flatbush is going to have an event uh, coming up in a few weeks. Schumer shows up with his bicycle, you know, whether he's invited or not. Are we going to let him come into the room even? Are we going to pretend and hug him? You know, we Jews, you know, we, you know, uh, we forget so fast. We're so nice. Are we going to tolerate Schumer should be persona non grata in the communities that care deeply about the well-being of the people of Israel, of the state of Israel. That's not going to happen. he did, a put a knife happen. into Israel's back. Not going to happen because they, on the other things, he's helpful with yeshivas and with funding. So you're going to find he'll be invited to all the places he gets invited to. Maybe some of the people will speak to him about it, but as far as the leadership rules, maybe, 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 maybe these people should ask the Shiloh. It's a Chil Hashem, again, if you invite someone like that. Come on, what happened to asking the Shiloh, whoever the leading rabbi is in your neighborhood or in America, I don't know who, what. But let's ask if that is okay after what he did. Come on, is it all just about money? Schumer will do what he has to do anyway. I mean, it's, come on, we cannot, we cannot be pathetic and so, it, you know, we should ask sometimes to ourselves, what does Hashem want? What's the right thing in the eyes of a Baruch What does Hashem think is the right thing? That's what we should say. Well, let's we're going to let this guy walk into our events, and we're going to let him speak? I hope to God not. Let me tell you, whatever opportunity I have to confront him in the future, I will confront him in his face. You still on the call him Didn't, Peter, you, which didn't, is what he didn't is. you after the Iran nuclear deal? Didn't you also have something about with Schumer? Didn't you speak to him? Or there was a rally that you were involved? Well, I, I, we, we had a rally outside of his office back in 2015 before he took a public position against the deal. Ultimately, he voted against the deal. But before he voted against, everybody was waiting. You know, he's such an important guy. He's such an important senator. Everybody was waiting. So a, a group of people protested. Ten of us got arrested outside of his office. But even when he came out against the deal, that was it. His mouth closed. He couldn't talk anymore. By the way, you know, Schumer is famous for holding a press conference every single Sunday. You know, every Sunday he holds a press conference. Whether he has anything to say or not, doesn't matter. He's a United States Senator. He has a press conference. Whatever it is, he, he'll he figure out what to talk about. He'll talk about strawberries. He'll talk about avocados. He'll find something to talk about. Zeb, over the last four years, before October 7th, the incidents of anti-Semitism have been at, at, at a level we have never seen before in the history of New York and America. Has Mr. Schumer ever held a press conference on Sunday dedicated, devoted to speaking out against anti-Semitism? We all know the answer to that. Motion, the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Are you there? Motion. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, Motion. You have a question for Dove Hyken. Go ahead. Hi, yes. Um, I know Dove. A couple of years ago, organized a protest rally outside of Sign Out Live Studios when two of the hosts made a joke uh, against Israel, um, not giving vaccines to the Palestinians. So it's been come out in the last week that, that the host two weeks from tonight will be a comedian named Rami Youssef, who at the Academy Awards last Sunday distributed these bloody hand pins that a number of celebrities wore. And he made some comments with the ceasefire and killing of children. I was wondering if Bill would consider doing another protest outside Sign Out Live um, March 30th. Uh, look, uh, we're going to do many things, and people should go to the website of Americans Against Anti Semitism. 
You should support us. You should be involved. Talk is very nice. Being concerned is very nice. Doesn't do a darn thing at the end. It's good to be concerned and it's good to care, but only if you act, only if it's followed up with something. And unfortunately, we're not, the Jewish community is not given enough things to actually do. Look at our enemies. Look at our enemies. Every single day, they are busy doing things. They're out there. They care about their cause. You know, and I, I hear some people say, oh, they don't have jobs. Uh, nice excuse. Nice, nice try. They don't have jobs. That's why they're out there all the time. But I wish we should learn from them. I'm jealous, actually, because we are not doing what we should be doing. You want Hashem to solve the problem? It's only if we do our part, and right now we are not doing our part. No, I will not be out of you know outside the studio. And I remember that night we were there. Uh, we had a nice group of people that were there. But people need to do activist type things. You know, the Jewish community can just be pushed around. There's no problem. And by the way, I, I just want to commend uh, Aguda Aguda to Israel for actually putting out a pretty strong statement against Schumer. Uh, you know, that was really, uh, I was surprised, but very, very happy. So I applaud our good Israel of America for doing the right thing. But we need to do more. We need to, we need to be organized. We need leaders. We need people to direct us as to what we should do. Let's go to Stan of Forest Hills. Stan, go ahead. Your question for Dove. Uh, I got a comment, if that's okay. Oh, go ahead. Uh, thank you. I watched the speech, and I, I tell you, I, 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 I've never been a fan of Netanyahu. Can't stand him. He should have been gone a long time ago. But wait, and I've been in a war. I was in Vietnam. And when you're in a war, you fight the war, and you don't say anything. You support the leader that there is, and keep your mouth shut. And that was the mistake. The other thing that uh, he said, which which somebody said, said, because of this situation that uh, Israel is a pariah. I have news for you. Israel was a pariah and they got to be a state. They hated their guts then. So what's no Nothing. It may be worse. It may happen again. But Israel must do what it has to do. And for that senator to say that, I think, to be honest with you, I think in the Jewish, the Orthodox community, I think he's finished. In the regular community, liberal a progressive. I'm liberal, but I'm not progressive. I think he's hurt, and I think he's in trouble. I don't think he gets it yet, but I think he's in trouble. And the president who I support and will vote for, I don't understand what he's doing. There's never going to be a two-state solution, so I don't know what the hell he's doing. That's it. Anyway, thank you for your phone call. What, what do you say, though? I think yes, I, I think points. That, that is right on target. It's not a question of whether you like him or to know you don't like him. That's not the issue. There is a war going on as we speak, okay? And this is not the time to undermine uh, the leadership of Israel. There will be a time when a reckoning will happen uh, with regard to Netanyahu and what happened on October 7th. But, but now to do what, what he did is absolutely, totally unacceptable. So uh, I'm with Sam uh, 100%, and he's right. You know, Israel is always been a pariah state, not so much after 1948. Uh, uh, in most of the world, you know, there was a lot of sympathy between 1948 and 1967. You know when the, you know when Israel really became the bad guys in the eyes of the progressives and the, the radicals in America and other places in the world? Israel had the chutzpah. You know, I remember the days of 1967. I was, I was 17 years old. I remember the weeks before the war when Syria, Egypt were mobilizing and Egyptian soldiers were marching through the streets of Cairo talking about pushing the Jews into the sea. They were going to destroy Israel in 1967. Even my yeshiva, Tarvadas, yeshiva Tarvadas, let the students out from the learning to go out and collect money and this and that and the other thing, because we were concerned, Zev, you know that. We were concerned, surrounded by all these enemies. What was going to happen? It, you know, uh, the Straits of Tehran and, and everything, and nobody was doing anything. Nobody was doing anything. 
And Israel had the chutzpah. Listen, Zev, they love us when we are murdered. They like dead Jews. The New York Times is great at doing editorials for dead Jews. You know, except, after the the Holocaust, Holocaust, except had, during the Holocaust, they buried the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying after the Holocaust, we had sympathy. Dead Jews, a lot of sympathy. You know, they can take the sympathy and shove it. We should do what we need to do, period. In 67, Israel was successful. By the way, from 1948 to 1967, the so-called West Bank, Judea and Samaria. Who controlled Judea and Samaria? Jordan. How come there was no Palestinian state then, Zev? Dope, from there 1948 is to 19... Jordan is a Palestinian state. Come on, let's be realistic. 90% of the population is Jordan. It was promised to Israel in the but, but, Declaration. But I'm just saying, what happened to the West Bank, Judea, between 48 and 67, when Jews were not permitted to go to the Western Wall, nobody cared. For 19 years, a Jew could not go to the holiest site of Judaism. They had the West Bank. No one even talked about a Palestinian state, Zev. Go back and look at the look, look at the history. No one talked about a Palestinian state, but the Jews had the chutzpah. Wow, we beat the enemy. Oh my God, Jews are supposed to be weak, not strong. That was the turning point. That was the turning point. Nineteen sixty-seven. Former Assemblyman Dove Hyken, he's head of Americans Against Anti-Semitism, is our guest, and we're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. And we'll take some more of your phone calls, 212-769-1925, 212-769-1925. You want to email zev at talklinenetwork.com. Email is a wonderful way to have some of your questions answered, zev at talklinenetwork.com. And coming up a little later on, Rabbi Abraham Cooper of the Wiesenthal Center. He was in Saudi Arabia, and they wouldn't let him wear a yarmulke at events, so the whole delegation left. We'll talk with him about what exactly transpired. So you don't want to miss our special broadcast. And also a program note today, Sunday, we're also on WOR 710 on the AM dial and at 9 p.m. And our guest is going to be Professor Abraham Winner. He, he deals with statistics and he will prove statistically why the Hamas numbers just don't work, how they made up. And he'll graph it. He shows exactly how it's all phony. And even though our president, everybody's counting on the Hamas statistics, but if you really look at it from an analytical point of view, you see they don't hold up to measure. we will be our special guest today, Sunday, also on WNEW, talklinenetwork.com. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. This is the Talkline Network. Take advantage of early bird pricing at Pesach Supreme's ultimate Hamish Pesach experience at the Sleepy Hollow Hotel in Tarrytown, close to New York City. Aside from tantalizing Pesach delicacies prepared fresh daily by famous Hamish chef Shimmy Zafir, your family will enjoy spectacular Cholamoid activities for all ages, including children's rides, kumzis, and coffee. Not to mention an exciting day camp program led by Ari Abramowitz, world-renowned singer Shia Burko, cousin Chaim Unger, and top-class entertainment led by Gershi Moskowitz, and so much more. Book Good now job. during the early bird special and get $500 off per couple room. Call, text, or WhatsApp 201-777-0212 to reserve. That's 201-777-0212. 201-777-0212. This program support Israel with a taste of the whole land. Men and women just love Evan Zahav's super smooth and soft Arak, the Israeli rum. The Evan Zahav Brandy VSOP in a special gift box and the premium Evan Zahav Goldstone Grand Reserve Brandy represents superb Israeli distilling traditions and the finest natural spirits and oak barrels ever made and makes for a great Shalach Manas gift. Jewish women work exceptionally hard this time of year and are the anchor of the home. What well, better way to show appreciation than with these exceptional drinks from Israel? If you're looking for other great choices for Purim, consider Etienne Francais VSOP Armagnac with subtle hints of spices. Etienne Francais VSOP Cognac aged for a minimum of four years in oak casks or Etienne Francais XO Cognac, aged for a minimum of 10 years in oak casks. The Kumba Chiliana collections are the best kosher mevushal wines from Chile. It's a big hit and has become a favorite wine for special occasions. Mm -hmm. Its taste is full and steady with notes of blueberry, mm -hmm. blackberry, and red currant. You'll also love the wild goat mevushal wines from Argentina, all kosher for Pesach and year-round. 
a happy perm from Doina Limited, importer of the okay. finest kosher wines, cognacs, and brandy. The Jewish Press is the largest independent weekly Jewish newspaper in the United States. It's packed with in-depth articles, interesting podcasts, information about the Jewish world, political and religious commentary, and more. Visit jewishpress.com or to subscribe to the print edition or advertise, call 718-330-1100. That's 718-330-1100. Hi, my name is Beth Chesser, and I am Director of Enrollment Management and Marketing at YU Global. Are you feeling stuck with your employment options? YU Global can help you with laser-focused courses to position you for success and help you advance your career, which careers are find that first job. YU Global certificate courses are completely online and asynchronous, allowing learning anytime and anywhere. A career center will provide resources to help you land a dynamic position after course completion. We also can develop courses to help employers upskill their employees to improve productivity. New courses for the spring include Introduction to AI, Project Management, Paralegal Professional Training, The Successful Entrepreneur, Residential Real Estate Investment, and so much more. Visit our full catalog at global.yu.edu. Separate men and women's classes are available. That's global.yu.edu. Your new career starts now. The following is a paid political message. Zab Shabuatov. My name is Dan Plout. I am a trustee of the village of Cedarhurst. This Tuesday, March 19th, we're going to be having elections for trustee of the village. And Myrna Zisman, my fellow trustee, and I are running for re-election to represent our beloved village for another four years. Some of the things that make our village unique and things that we have passion to help our residents, first and foremost, safety and security. We have, Myrna and I, a very deep relationship and collaboration with NCPD, Nassau County Police Department. And this was illustrated in a couple of recent thoughts. One, we put together with our mayor, Mayor Weinstock, Deputy Mayor, New York State Assemblyman Ari Brown, as well as Trustee Izzy Wasser, we put together a pro-Israel rally one week after the massacre on October the 7th in our village. We had 5,000 people there, including many dignitaries, and NCPD had tremendous security there, as they always do, and as they did this past Tuesday at the real estate event in the Young Israel Lawrence Cedarhurst. So that's, that's one thing that we take tremendous pride on. In addition, we have the lowest taxes of any village on the south shore of Nassau County, and this is through collaboration with our own DPW, which basically does road, road repair as well as lighting for the village i ask everybody please come out vote march 19th in cedarhurst village hall for myrna zisman and dan cloud zeb thank you so much thank you for listening to this episode of talk line with zeb brenner america's premier jewish broadcast on the air since 1981 please call us with your questions and comments at 212-769-1925 that's 212-769-1925 or email us at zevbrenner at gmail.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. Okay, we are back. And uh, former Assemblyman Dove Hyken is our guest. We're taking some of your phone calls. He said of Americans Against Anti-Semitism. Let's go to Saul in Flatbush. Saul in Flatbush, you have a question or comment. Go ahead, please. Yeah, hi, Dove. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, go Good ahead. Luck. You're on the air. Go ahead, Saul. Saul, are you there? Okay, if Saul's not there, we'll take another call. Let's go to Yaakov in Brooklyn. Go ahead, Yaakov in Brooklyn. Yes, hi. Uh, uh, our, our prime minister in Israel, that is, had made a statement on, on MSNBC that uh, 
even if Michigan is against us, we still have 82% of the United States for us. If, if, they, if this administration feels like interfering in Israel's electoral process, they should be tit for tat, and he should interfere and say, okay, you're welcome to Michigan, you're welcome to Wisconsin, we're getting the rest of the country. Oh, yes, it's interfering in America's electoral process, but that's what they just did. And if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Well, well listen, uh, uh, Yanko, no one should interfere in another country's electoral process. It's not proper. It's not the right thing. And people resent it, by the way. So, uh, I mean, what Schumer did actually uh, helps the prime minister of Israel. It helps Netanyahu. Uh, I mean, he really helps the prime minister because as outrageous as it is, we're all angry and we should be. Uh, you know, the people of Israel, Schumer is not their hero. Schumer, or Biden for that matter, uh, the people of Israel get it. They know who their friends are. Uh, so what Schumer did is actually strengthen uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. There's no question about it. But no one should interfere in other countries' electoral process. It's a very dangerous, dangerous thing to do. Yeah, but that satisfy your... Your question? Uh, well, no, well if, if Israel, I don't know why it's dangerous if they can do it to Israel, but, but be that as it may, then if that's the case, if Israel can't do it back to America, then we Jews should go in front of Hikin's office and say, you're welcome to Michigan, you and your boss are welcome to Michigan, welcome to Wisconsin, and Israel's going to, I mean, uh, Trump is going to get the rest of the country, so you're welcome to it. And thank you, Yaakov, for your phone call. I appreciate that. What do you say, Dove? I, I, I'm not sure what exactly what he said. I stand basically by what I said before. Okay, let's go to Saul and Flappers. Thank you for waiting. Go ahead, Saul. Yeah, hi, good book. Yes, good book. You, you're, really on, you're really on target. Uh, I, I, would, I mean, here you got, when, when Schumer made his speech, did he really think that Netanyahu would say, oh, Chuck Schumer doesn't want me to be prime minister, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to resign? Of course not. The fact is he's going to be prime minister the way it seems now till the end of the war. All Schumer did was weaken the leader of a country fighting an existential war to survive. He, he literally weakened Israel. And that's exactly what he did. All, what, he, what his interest was is to curry favor with the radical left of the Democrat party. And, and the saddest part of all this is that part of his calculation is that those in the Jewish community that, you know, that need his funding and all this other stuff that's going to continue. Unfortunately, like even when you said the good official made a good statement against Schumer, but the fact is the first part of their statement that I'm looking at it, where he says, and this is talking about Schumer, he feels the existential threat that Israel faces and the hate and viciousness that surround her. The pain of Israel has experienced before and after October 7th is his own. And his <laughs> desire for, for peace is also his own. Anybody who, who, who read Chuck Schumer's words in his major address knows this to be true. Is that really true? Does a good really believe that Chuck Schumer had, had Israel in his heart? I mean, the fact of the matter is that organizations like Aguda, even though they put out the statement, they know they don't want to cut the apron strings. They're still going to need his money. They're going to need the funding. And unfortunately, in a, in a short while, he's going to be he's going to be welcomed at an Aguda dinner like just like nothing happened. But That's stop, the but stop, but let me, let me before, before Dove respond, let me just say this. The fact is, though, that he still is a, is a senator, and you just cut off all your ties. You try to work around the situation. And the truth is, with the exception of the Iran deal, where you play both sides of the fence, he, he generally has been good on Israel. So you can't take that away from him. But what happened now is, is an outrage. There's no question about that. But, but over the years, he has been a strong supporter of Israel. Let's, let's, let's look at the total. Zef, Zef, Zef. Saying that Schumer has been a friend of Israel when he's the senator from New York with the largest concentration of Jews anywhere in the country. AOC that, is from New York. I, guess, and she's not I don't give him much credit for that. Okay. I really don't. Because, I mean, what do you expect? I mean, you, you know, when he runs for re election, he wants to have the support of everybody. Of course, he's going to do that. that, that the point is that in one second, he will be remembered for this speech for the rest of his life. And by the way, you know, those who want to welcome Schumer, you know, fine. 
but there should be enough other people in his face. There should be enough other people who make it miserable for him when he goes to certain events. And I'm talking, when I say in his face, I mean getting up to his face and calling him a traitor or other things that may be on your mind that you want to call him. When someone undermines the Jewish people, a nation at war, at a time like this, that person deserves to be treated very harshly. So there are enough people out there who get it, who understand, who have some Jewish pride still. And Schumer... You're 100% right. You're 100% right, though. And as far as the good is concerned, uh, uh, Zev, I, I just want to say that, uh, yeah, I read the statement, the entire statement. I read the ADL statement. Uh, you know, I, gave, I give it a uh, C minus, but, you know, better than a D. Okay? From the... The, the thing that surprised me, and it's <clears throat> it's a sad commentary on Aguda, is that the sad co- is that they issued a statement being critical, and a statement, even though there were three lines in it that were critical of Schumer, uh, but it, it was it was not bad. It was you know it gets a B, a B, a B it gets. But uh, look, uh, you know, just think of this of our enemies, of other groups out there. Do you think they would tolerate anything like this if it came from people that they support ordinarily? Oh, I'm talking about other groups. You know, we Jews were such nice people. We you know, we go very nice nicely people. to guest chambers. Nicely, we go nicely. Yeah, where do you want us to go? You want us to go? Yeah, I'm sure, of course. We're nice people. Listen, in this particular case, I believe, as I said at the onset, Dove and Saul, is that Senator Schumer is doing the bidding of the Biden administration and working for her, just like he did with the Obama administration with the nuclear deal. He only was against it when votes showed clearly that it was going to pass, so then he can afford to be against it. I think now he's under the influence. Senator President Biden wants to be reelected. Then he's took the top Jew, the top Jewish Democrat, and they coordinated this where he was told to say this. Yeah, it doesn't matter why, why he did it. It's what he did. He is, again, he himself said about himself in that speech that he is the position that he holds as a Jew is the highest position in the United States of America. He used his Jewishness, the fact that he is a Jew, he used that to put that knife into Israel's back. He betrayed the values of this country. You know, we talk about interference from other countries. We want to ban tic tac. We're concerned about what happened in the past with interference from other countries. And you have this person who describes himself as the most powerful Jew in America, interfering in the democracy that Israel is, an elected prime minister. You don't like who Netanyahu is? Most of this country doesn't like Biden, for God's sake. Amen. Amen. Anyway, Saul, thank you. Good to hear from you again. Okay, be well. Okay. Um, we're speaking with former Sullivan Dove Hyken. His organization is goes Americans Against Anti-Semitism. And we're looking at uh, Senator Chuck Schumer and his remarks regarding the Prime Minister of Israel and regarding the fact that he compares him and the, and some of the Israeli right to Hamas and Mahmoud Abbas. Where, I mean, uh, the only good thing, Dove, as we break, is that he compared Hamas with Mahmoud Abbas, right? <laughs> it's uh, well, you know, I tell you, I like I said, I listened to the whole speech. He said some other things that were great, but the only thing that has gotten any coverage is the, the part exactly only the part, the headlines, the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, every newspaper, every TV station. By the way, Hamas was celebrating, they were celebrating Schumer because they are succeeding in undermining support for Israel. Let me tell you, if Schumer was there in the South on October 7th, you know what they would have done with him, right? 
Oh, they don't care what kind of a Jew you are. By the way, uh, is the exactly. most interesting thing, and we're going to have people from Kfaraz, I heard some of them speak today, is that the people that were there, there was one person who was killed who makes a kite every year to send over to the to the Gaza, uh, I think around Sukkot's time, if I, if I remember hearing correctly, because they're peace-loving, they want to be peace with the, with the Palestinians. And who, oh, absolutely. The ones, and who are the ones that they first killed? Who are the ones right. that Hamas first killed? The Nova yeah. F Festival, these communities near Gaza where they wanted, they brought in some of these palaces, they worked with them, they helped them, and this is the reward. Right, right. The, the people in the South, the people in the South, they were two-state solution. They, they brought people from Gaza to Israeli hospitals to help them. They were the peaceniks of Israel. They marched. They marched, but let me tell you, as you know, I was there a few days after October 7th. I met the people from the area, and I met the people from Kfar Aza, and I met other people, the survivors. Let me tell you. They no longer are the same people as far as the oh, Palestinian Arabs are concerned. Not when they see them. Absolutely. absolutely. It's just, it just frightening. And you hear some of the stories, what these barbarians and some of the people that they supported, how they turned on, and, and they're the ones that spied on these communities and showed them where the, the safe houses and where the homes were and where the ammunition were. And you had, they were there for days doing slaughtering. So right. this is the reward that they got them for it. Unfortunately, they're well-meaning, but I think their eyes are opened up after October 7th. Former Southern Dove Hiking as our guest. We're going to be right back right after these messages. And if you'd like to participate, we'll continue taking some more of your phone calls. 212-769-1925. 212-769-1925. you have any comments about Senator Schumer, what we're talking about tonight, people have been calling me. you got to talk about Senator Schumer tonight, but we are listening to your request. 212-769-1925. Email is a wonderful way to have your questions answered. Zevit Talk Line network.com zevatalklinenetwork.com coming up a little later on we'll be speaking to rabbi abraham cooper of the wiesenthal center and why he left saudi arabia because they wouldn't allow him to wear a yarmulke we'll find out more about that right after in a little bit as well we're going to be right back don't go away stay tuned you are listening to the talk line network this perm support israel with a taste of the holy land men and women just love evan zahav's super smooth and soft arak the israeli rum the Evan Zahav Brandy VSOP in a special gift box and the premium Evan Zahav Goldstone mm -hmm. and Reserve Brandy represents superb Israeli distilling traditions and the finest natural spirits and oak barrels ever made and makes for a great Shalach Manas gift. Jewish women work exceptionally hard this time of year and are the center of the home. What better way to show appreciation than with these exceptional drinks from Israel? If you're looking for other great choices for Purim, Consider Etienne Francais VSOP Armagnac with subtle hints of spices. Etienne Francais VSOP Cognac, aged for a minimum of four years in oak casks. Or Etienne Francais XO Cognac, aged for a minimum of 10 years in oak casks. The Cuba Chiliana collections are the best from official wines from Chile. It's a big hit and has become a favorite wine for special occasions. It is full and steady with notes of blueberry, blackberry, and red currant. You'll also love the wild goat Mavushal wines from Argentina, all kosher for Pesach and year-round. A happy Purim from Doina Limited, importer of the finest kosher wines, cognacs, and brandy. The following is a paid political message. Can't I tell Zev now? I'm Tov. My name is Dan Plout. I am a trustee of the village of Cedarhurst. This Tuesday, March 19th, we're going to be having elections for trustee of the village. And Myrna Zisman, my fellow trustee, and I are running for re-election to represent our beloved village for another four years. Some of the things that make our village unique and things that we have passion to help our residents. First and foremost, safety and security. We have, Myrna and I, a very deep relationship and collaboration with NCPD, Nassau County Police Department. And this was illustrated in a couple of recent thoughts. One, we put together with our mayor, Mayor Weinstock, Deputy Mayor and New York State Assemblyman Ari Brown, as well as Trustee Izzy Wasser, we put together a pro-Israel rally one week after the massacre on October the 6th in our village. We had 5,000 people there, including many dignitaries. And NCP, well, 
security there, as they always do, and as they did this past Tuesday at the real estate event in the Young Israel Lawrence Cedarhurst. So that's that's one thing that we take tremendous pride on. In addition, we have the lowest taxes of any village on the south shore of Nassau County. And this is through collaboration with our own DPW, which basically does road road repair as well as lighting for the village. I ask everybody, please come out, vote March 19th in Cedarhurst Village Hall for Bernard Zisman and Dan Cloud. Zeb, thank you so much. Hey, it's New York Times bestselling author and ghostwriter Michael Levin, and books are my babies. Here's an amazing idea for a gift for a loved one or friend, or perhaps for yourself, a family memoir, a business book, or any other kind of book written and published just for you. My company, Jewish Leaders Books, offers ghostwriting, publishing, marketing, and distribution of books onto Amazon and through Simon & Schuster, distribution into brick and mortar Barnes and Noble bookstores, and even into airport bookstores. You can get a framed photo of the cover design to give as the perfect gift. To learn more about how Jewish Leaders Books can get your book done for you or for a friend or loved one, contact my friend Zeb Brenner at 212-769-1925, extension 100, or drop him an email at zeb at talklinenetwork.com. Again, that's 212-769-1925, extension 100, or write to Zev at zev at talklinenetwork.com, and we will get your book going for you. In a place where tradition meets luxury, the Sleepy Hollow Hotel in Terrytown, newly renovated, featuring a stunning exterior, beautiful rooms, and an inviting lobby, a stunning pool, and a spa, plus a shul and a mikveh right outside. Inked executive host is Menachem Weinstein. <laughs> Savor the flavors of Pesach with Chef Shimmy. Fresh food that will delight your senses. Things through rides, caricature arts, concerts, Yom Tov Show, Carnival Games, Xylophone Play, 277 Hey, this is Dr. Elliot Paradox, Dr. Kaplan, inviting you to my show on Thursday nights at 930. And okay. is paradoxical advice. We talk about different therapies and to tell you the truth, a new way of looking at uh, doing therapy and mm -hmm. uh, approaching couples, families, kids. And uh, it's on WSNR, 620 AM. And WNEW 102.7 FM HD3. Hope you can make it, and I look forward to seeing you. You're listening to this episode of Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. Please call us with your questions and comments at 212 769 1925. That's 212 769 1925. Or email us at zevbrenner at gmail.com. And we're back, our final stretch with former Senator Dove Hiking. Let's get to some of your emails. <clears throat> Alan writes, Schumer's ill-timed attack on Bibi Netanyahu was directed, I'm sure, by the clique around Biden. It was an appalling misleading of Israeli public opinion, which will not tolerate a terrorist state that will undoubtedly have October 7th as Palestinian Independence Day, import Iran Revolutionary Guards, and most dangerously continue to pursue its stated aim of the river to the sea, but Schumer is painting a picture of Israel where the people are against policies that Bibi Netanyahu created. Does he not know that there is a coalition government which is collectively responsible, that Netanyahu was not commander-in-chief, that most Israelis want to crush Hamas? Schumer should be a pariah in the Jewish world. Yeah, look, at, right on target. Uh, you know, uh, I mentioned before that uh, uh, Gantz, who's an important part of the... Uh, I don't know if it's the coalition, but part of the war cabinet now, uh, who, by the way, is very, very popular. You know, most polls predict that Gantz is going to get 30, 40 uh, seats in the Knesset. But Gantz uh, immediately came out blasting Schumer and these remarks. So it's not about, again, they want to make it, you know, about uh, uh, Smotrich and Ben Gavir, the, you know, the boogie, the boogeyman, uh, the, the, you know. And, you know, when you have someone like Gantz coming out and saying the same thing that all of us are saying, that this is wrong to interfere in Israeli, the Israeli political democracy, uh, you know, and again, no question, 
It was done in coordination with Biden. Biden and by the way, uh, his enemies, the radicals in the Democratic Party, they're, they're, they're still not happy. They'll only be happy, you know when? When Biden announces abandoning Israel, when he says no more weapons for Israel, then they may support him. Here's an email from Bracha. Bracha writes, are you aware of that the former Shin Bet director Ami Ayalon said if I were a Palestinian I'd fight against Israel, what can we do about Israelis like this? Well, uh, you know, Israel is a democracy. Isn't it wonderful? And by the way, you have so many former everything. Former head of this, former head, because, you know, after all these years, so since 1948, there have been a lot of important people, you know, who have titles. And people, you know, have different points of view. And uh, uh, his view is, you know, he's entitled to it. It's a democracy. There's nothing else to say. That's the beauty. You, you can't, you know, all these radicals in America who are demonstrating in support of Hamas, you know, all these groups, do they recognize, do they realize who they're supporting and what they stand for, what Hamas stands for? Forget about Israel. I'm talking about whether it's LGBT, whether it's women's rights, on and on and on. I mean, the, the radicals here in America, they would hang them all on lampposts in Gaza, in Iran, in Syria. This is who they're supporting blindly daoud writes uh, he says he's a catholic new yorker he says that these anti-jewish anti-american activists don't need jobs they're getting paid by community organizations which are funded by subgrants from dot orgs and by doj community policing funds he wants us to ask chuck schumer how it's done and which dot orgs give the money look uh the our enemies are incredibly organized they have these rallies all the time, well attended, everything that, you know, they listen to your show, they read all the Anglo-Jewish newspapers, they know every event that's going to happen, right? The, the, the real estate events, everything is organized. I have seen them put out uh, the plans for the next 10 days. There are like 40 different events going on that they will be demonstrating and so on and so forth. So. They are very organized. Look, but we is should. There money, behind, the, is there the, money behind it? Yes, big bucks behind them. The question, though, is that can we follow the money trail and do something about it? Because without the money, these rallies would exist to a bare minimum. So that's the real challenge. I don't have the answer that, to this. People question. have a right to give money to organize events. The real answer is, Zev, where's the money on our side to organize? Well, the we, two we had a rally in Washington. We should be organizing our side, but I think we should also be following the money trail and expose those that are putting up this money because people look at it as being spontaneous. It's anything but spontaneous. Right, right. So if I vote tonight, and maybe others will do the same, that the ADL do that. I, I have, listen, they have a lot of investigative abilities, so why not? I think it's why haven't they started doing it already? Let us know where know. the. And and the don't, money. don't hold your breath, Zev. I know, but we have to put pressure because the truth is, if you can stop the flow of money and challenge that, that you have some success in, in thwarting some of their activities. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we're right in secret. They're not advertising. We're giving millions of dollars for these protests. But if it's been proven to the American people that these are organized and being paid for, I think it would also change the dynamics. But, Zev, beyond the organized, the money, People who support that cause are going into the streets. And we need to do our part. It's not just about trying to stop them. Yeah, let's find oh, out what we should be doing. We should be supporting Zev, it. Zev, we're not doing. We're, Zev, we're not doing, Zev. You're we're right. Doing, we're not doing. We could be doing. A lot more we could be doing. I'm going to squeeze one or two more emails for you, Dove. Uh, Sylvia writes, if Schumer is ready to permanently relocate to Israel's boundary lines 24-7, together with all his loved ones and risk desk, his words would still not be acceptable. He knows the dangers Israelis face. Let the fake phony fraud looking to appease the spot keep his mouth shut. Let's skip all the political babble. Anybody who votes for Schumer is the same fake phony fraud. My question to you, Dove, is 
what can we do electorally? It's maybe not against Senator Schumer, but against AOC and some of the other squad members that it's a Shonda that they are able to get reelected and sometimes would have strong Jewish areas where there should be some group working to defeat them. And well, put more the, pro-Israel in their place. Yeah, I don't know about AOC. Someone is running against her, but a couple of the other radicals in the Democratic Party, uh, some of them have serious races this year. Uh, Bauman, who's who's as bad as they come, uh, uh, you know, he has a very serious race, uh, and some of the others as well. So, you know, people should support their opponents. If we could defeat a couple of them, two or three of the main people, there's a real opportunity, there's a real possibility of that actually happening. But I, I just want to say one other thing, I, 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 you know, to all the listeners, wherever they are, uh, you know, we got to defeat the Democrats, period. I hate to say it. Uh, we. I should now say, by the way, Democrat turned Republican have, of Heiken. Yeah. Have, have any Democrats uh, uh, come out to be critical of what Schumer just did? Any, any Democrats who love Israel, care deeply about Israel, have any problem with what Schumer said? Can, can anyone name one, one single Democrat? One, one, think about it, wherever you are. One Democrat who thinks that Schumer did something horrible, which he did, one, and you you will not find any. Because it's all politics. It's not about doing the right thing. You're right. Uh, former former Democratic Assemblyman Dove Heiken, now Republican. You going to be running for office uh, back soon? You miss it? Yeah, you know, you know, uh, Seth. With everything going on, I, I, you know, I didn't miss it at all. <laughs> but things have gotten so out of control that, you know, it, it. If I had the opportunity, I would turn the world up. You know that. So maybe, maybe from Nassau County, uh, you have an opportunity. So we shall see. We shall. We shall see, Seth. Dove Heiken, former assemblyman, also the head of Americans Against Anti-Semitism. Thank you for joining us. And by the way, I just found out that your rabbi, who I'm a big fan of, by Rabbi Krimsky, is the uh, being honored at Atarat Kohanim this year. Rabbi Eli Krimsky, I'm together with, uh, can we announce some of the other guests too that are going to be together? Sid Rosenberg, uh, I believe, Shani, who else? <laughs> Sid Rosenberg. Oh, there's, uh, but Rabbi Krimsky is a very special person. As you know, I spent Shabbos at his shul with Shani, with you. Uh, he is a sweetheart. Him and his Rebbitson, by the way. They are terrific. I'm looking forward to the... Uh, I, I actually brought them to the uh, Tarot dinner. What was it? Two years ago. Two years ago. Right. Two years ago, yeah. So we're looking forward. That's going to be a big event, and it's going to be really, this is going to be a momentous year for Jerusalem Reclamation Project. Yeah, listen, these are very meaningful times, and especially for Jerusalem, more than ever. And the date, of course, is June uh, 6th? 4th. June 4th. June 4th. Uh, everyone, you know, put that on your calendar. You'll hear more. You'll see more. And uh, Zev will be there. God willing, yes. Maybe I'll emcee the dinner for you. Who knows? We'll see. Talk to Shadi. I'm, I'm for that. <laughs> anyway, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We should have we should have a good week with uh, Purim coming, and uh, we should see some real, really great things happening in Kali Yisro. Amen, amen. Say hello to Shani there for me too. I will. Shavuot Tov. Happy Purim. Thank you so much. All the best, Seth. Thank you. Dove Hyken here on the Talk Line Network. When we come back, Rabbi Abraham.